Thank you, everyone. I'm uh, Bjorn Lindy. I'm sitting at the Norwegian University of Technology and Science, where I work in the HPC group. And together with me today, I have Hussein. A few words about you, Hussein. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I was here the other day as well. I'm one of the RSDs, Research Software Engineers at Aalto University. Happy to be here. So we'll uh, discuss automated testing from now and now and in the next two hours. So you find the lesson under day six. So um, my experience, first experience with testing was when I worked in a software development company in the mid nineties. Uh, and the process were very fast like we would develop code eight to 12 weeks. And then there was four weeks of intensive testing before we ship the application uh, so we, we were not exposed to any agile methods at that time those uh, came much later after year 2000 Ooh, so mm -hmm. what's your experience with testing uh, Hossa? Um so when i was st started studying it was part of the agile and like test driven development thing and uh so I was familiar with the concept, but when I got hands experience, it was uh, mainly in the industry experience that I had, because sometimes in academia, people think that, okay, my program is not that long or it's not very complicated, so I can maybe uh, get rid of the testing and forget about that part. But when you are doing some production thing, it's one of the necessary things that you had to do before you merge anything into the production. That's right. So have you experienced all of these problems that you change B and C and uh, function A doesn't work anymore? Uh, I can say all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all the time, yes. <laughs> yeah, if, if, it, if it works, I would be more suspicious that, okay, like, is everything working correctly? Because it, it, it shouldn't, just as, but yeah. Yeah. And uh, writing tests on sometimes seems uh, like a long way to get a solution. So it's uh, so it's um, something that we not always prioritize. Mm. But uh, hopefully we'll see it with today's lesson is that it can be really, really useful to have uh, tests and you know, they and these can be automated. Yes, exactly. Oh, I would say that intensive test that you mentioned at the beginning is still a thing. And uh, uh, some companies still do that, especially for security and to make sure that their application, their product is robust enough. But adding automated testing can do a lot in the in time of production and in time of software developing for the team. That's right. And uh, and. Uh... Tests are very good when uh, you get someone else's code, uh, and especially code that you have written long ago. Mm -hmm. So when you change something, you can see if things breaks or not. Correct. And also, like at least for me, sometimes it really helps that uh, when you get someone else's code, uh, sometimes you don't understand what does a function do, and you look at a test and you get an idea that, okay, this function is supposed to do this, because you can see what is the expected result of that specific function, for yeah, example. Yes, that's right. So well, today, uh, today's lessons are, uh, we'll discuss a little bit about motivation for tests. We are given, given some motivation now, but we will go deeper into the, that. We will then show an example of where we test uh, locally, just to have a local uh, repository with some code and, and run tests. Um, we will then move to GitHub and show how we can have automated testing as a part of doing pull requests or uh, merges. Then we have a, a bunch of code uh, where tests that we will discuss under test designs before mm -hmm. we conclude and come with some recommendations. Great. Let's get into it. Yeah. Um, we will focus on Python and use PyTest uh, during the day. 
So uh, uh, there are examples with other languages, but we will not go into these. We will not demonstrate those. So the, those are who are interested interested in R or C plus plus can take a look for themselves after the lesson. Okay. So let's see here about the motivation. Untested software can be compared to uncalibrated detectors. Yes, that's something we know from the laboratory that if you have an instrument or a detector, it should be calibrated with some known sample before being used for experiments. And uh, here we have the uh, uh, the statement that software should be treated equally, that uh, with tests uh, we can uh, use uh, uh, software are calibrated uh, and then uh, uh, it shows that it's ready for being used uh, for an experiment. There are some horror stories. We have two links to uh, uh research software stories about research software where things have gone wrong so uh we have this uh, scientist nightmare pro so, uh, nightmare uh that uh, a scientist had to retract papers because uh, there were some tables that were mixed and uh there are also this uh, python bug where results of an uh, analysis uh, were different on different operating system so due to how the sorting mechanism of uh, the file system worked. So uh, the uh, correction of the error was to implement a sort function that worked equally on across all platforms. Have you uh, experienced anything like that, Jose? Uh, not on top of my mind, but I was thinking maybe we can also add the Crowder Strike one that someone mentioned in the icebreaker for the future, because it's yes. something that affected a lot of people and everyone has, has, has heard of that. So, yeah. That's right. So how, how does a, uh, a test uh, look? Here we have a Python test. We have a function called uh, Fahrenheit to Celsius. And uh, we have written then a test of that function. So we have a, a temperature in Fahrenheit and calculate the expected, uh, is to calculate the temperature in Celsius compare it to uh, an expected result. Uh, and here we see that we test for, uh, use a numerical test so, so that we, uh, so that the results are within the expected tolerance. Yeah. We will see an example later where we test with the use a numerical test and use equal signs, and um, then the test uh, fails, though the error is small. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you can test the uh, whole programs. So here is an example that we just test an application and and a get the message that this is correct. So um, what can head tests help you to do? Uh, it can preserve expected functionality. You check that uh, all things don't break. Uh, as Hossan talked about, it can help users of the code that you see that you uh, yeah, verify that uh, the software is installed correctly, but also you see, you see examples of what, what it should do. Uh, when we have installed software on uh, a 
high performance computing systems. Uh, there is often test suites uh, together with the software, and then we run this test suite to, to verify that the installation is uh, correct. Uh, it can help uh, others, developers, to modify the code. So did you verify that the change that you made to the code is not breaking anything? Uh, it can manage complexity. If the code is easy to test, it's probably easier to maintain. So this was also be shown in uh, the less modular code development. Okay, so uh, let's have a discussion. Uh, we can uh, have a discussion in the mm -hmm. Let share me add document. It. Yep. Let me add it to the. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll vote in the notes and we'll discuss uh, the results. We'll... So I added questions and feel free to add some O's and choose as many as you want. And we'll give you a few minutes to answer the uh, questions. So what is your personal experience? Do you like add tests all the time or? I, I try to use uh, test-driven development when I write code. Mm -hmm. uh, th that's, uh, I'm not always sticking to that principle, but, but mostly I try to. So uh, we will give an example of that later, what that is, but uh, then, I'll, then I'll write test before I write, write the uh, function or class. That, uh, um, yeah. So, so the, when I'm finished developing, then I have a set of ideally I have a set of tests and a set of soft uh, functions. Mm. But it, but it's ideally it's not uh, it's not uh, like that every time. What about you? I would try to like uh, add enough tests, I would say, but, uh, and by enough, I mean, I would try to go with more complex functions that could go break and like could go wrong in a way when the program gets more complicated. And if I'm just having a one a short script, I would skip doing the test things. Um, but yeah, but uh, I was actually mentioning on the notes as well that, these days, uh, I'm getting more used to using these generative AI models to help me to write the tests. Right. And uh, yeah, the experience was was good enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because in the end, uh, it's a program that has some tests. It's better than a program that doesn't have any. And the more you add, the more robust your program would be for the future changes. And uh, yeah. Yeah. So let's see. Uh, take a look at the responses. So when is it okay not to add tests? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, Peter, or Markdown notebook? Yeah which produces a plot that can be hard to test. Yeah. I think you will manually verify a plot by looking at it. A short, obvious, correct Python script 
which you never intend to reuse. Well, some things that uh, is okay not to test. If it's very obvious and it's very short, I, th I think it's very good to add a test really. What's here? Once I heard that someone said, go to the library and find ungraded thesis. And the great thesis, find the word obviously, and you will always find an error. <laughs> okay. Let's see, is there a, any questions here that we should uh, discuss? How do you recommend people test your code before publications? like to make sure each line of code is doing what it's supposed to do. Yeah. Yeah. And we have some answers for this one. Maybe we can address a second question, mm -hmm. which there is no answer yet for it. So the question is, I mostly develop software to analyze my experiment or keep track of changes in variables in experiments. I'm not sure how I should incorporate tests when developing this software. Would it be okay to just have a simpler check, for example, for reference samples and ensures that it gives the proper results? I think we will discuss it a bit uh, in this session uh, about, about a similar thing, like with the factorial functions that we have. Uh, yes, in the test design uh, session, we will touch upon this. Uh, mm -hmm. But the short uh, uh, answer is that you could use uh, mocking for 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 handling external yeah. uh, references. Mm. Correct. Um, um, yeah. So, so my experience was just to add some sample tests that you want to make sure that the function works correctly. And also the rule of thumb is to take care of the, uh, how should I say, like the edges, like the barriers. Yeah, because right. some, yes. So that is something to keep in, to keep in mind. And uh, I guess if you add those ones, you are good to go. So, uh... There's some questions about general generative AI. Mm -hmm. Are there any generative AI oh, to integrate into the local computer? Yes, the, there. You often you have to buy a license or a, a, a subscription. At least uh, uh, JetBrains uh, editors have uh, an AI agent incorporated which you can subscribe to um there are like some other models that you can use uh for example like uh like olama supports many of the models that you can run locally on your machine and there are like some ides like cursor or even vs code that you can integrate these ai models into your uh development development environment uh so you don't have to necessarily buy a subscription but uh usually those ones are more easy and plug and play uh, so if you don't afraid to get your hands a bit dirty you can try to the open source ones and integrate yeah. it into your local machine yeah okay but i guess you have to get your hands dirty a bit <laughs> nowadays it's more like developed i would say like olama for example which i can add it here actually in the comments uh, has a lot of supported models, so you can use it. Usually the problem is actually with the hardware because your personal laptop probably doesn't have enough memory or graphical memory to run more fancy models. Uh, but yeah, you can give it a try. Uh, so the question four here, how to test code with random inputs? We will show an example with random numbers in the test design episode. We will uh, not test uh, how to test a GUI code. We will not uh, touch upon that. Uh, mm -hmm. We are terminal based. We don't <laughs> do much for the GUI. Um, okay, so let's go back to the lesson. 
So um, there are a range of uh, types of tests. Uh, what we gave an example of uh, early on was, was a unit test. Uh, and that's typically what you develop together with your functions, uh, unit tests. Then you have integration tests where you put the parts together and verify that it works. End-to-end uh, -end test where you see that the application produce the expected result. Uh, regress regression tests. Uh, you collect a portfolio of old errors and implement tests for these that they're they are kept out of the that they don't uh, reappear in the code. Uh, we, you have test driven development where you write the test first and then develop on code to verify that the test works or breaks and then improve the code. We'll try to give a sample of that in their test design. Mm -hmm. Continuous integration. You have a portfolio of tests that you run on uh, GitLab or GitHub as a part of a merge or a pull request. That will we'll see an example of that. Um, you have code coverage. That's a report that tells you which lines are run uh, or tested and which are not. And there are different uh, frameworks for running a uh, test. Uh, we use uh, PyTest to in these examples that we will show today. So uh, what should you do? Well, uh, not every code needs perfect test coverage that you don't have to go for 100% coverage of the tests. Um, but uh, a reasonably high coverage is uh, is good. Uh, an interactive Jupyter notebook that we saw yesterday is uh, hard to test. Um, end to end test is often easy. I find it often easy to, to write tests for functions, uh, to mm -hmm. isolate functions and write unit tests. Uh, add tests of tricky functions, yes. And it's easy to have GitLab, GitHub run tests. We will show this today. Where do you start? Well, start simple. Uh, here, the, the recommendation is uh, start with an end-to-end -end test. Uh, I would say that uh, as you get acquainted with the code, uh, you should try to add tests for functions that you, after a while, understands. Describe in words how you check whether the code still works uh, and translate the words into scripts uh, and run these scripts automatically on every code change. Anything uh, more to add for we go uh, to no, local not testing? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, we can oh. go to the next section. Yeah. Then we'll uh, start do a demonstration of how we can do have our local testing. So I'll show my terminal here. So in this exercise, we'll make a simple function and uh, use PyTest for uh, testing that uh, that uh, function. I'll make the directory local testing example and cd into that. Uh, the Python code shows here that we have a function add and uh, in the same uh, 
together with the add function, we have a, a test function, test add, which uses the add function. So I'll uh, copy this code. And uh, create a file example.py. A little moment here now. Example.py. Here we have pasted the code into the file. So I'll save it. And uh, I run this with PyTest. PyTest is uh, if you install, have installed the code refinery uh, uh, Conda environment, PyTest is a part of the environment. Mm -hmm. And then you can um, just write PyTest example.py. And we see that the, the test passed. I have minus v uh, dash v there for uh, getting uh, for a more reverberose uh, feedback from mm -hmm. the PyTest. Can you run it without the dash v? And um... yeah, I yeah. can do that. Then there is less output. It just. Mm -hmm. But uh, how does PyTest understand like what functions to test and uh, how does it work? PyTest looks for uh, a func functions that called uh, that start with test mm -hmm. underscore, and so it understands that uh, test add is a, test, a function that it needs to to uh, execute. Okay. Great. So let's uh, add a bug to the code. So if we modify add to do some subtraction instead, then we have an error in our code. And uh, PyTest will then give us a red warning. Minus V example. So here we see that the test fails. Mm -hmm. And it show where in the test function that the error pops up. It yes. runs assert add to comma three, it's supposed to be equal five that the function returns minus one, and then that's not equal to five. So the assert fails. Uh, yes, so... Uh, so we have a question that I'm trying. I'm I'm answering on the note, but I think it's it's good to for everyone to hear. Mm -hmm. um, like someone asked, uh, when you have like several functions to test, is it okay to put your test underscore functions for testing the functions in a different script so the original one is easier to read? Yes, uh, uh, that is a, a very good thing to do. Either uh, have a subdirectory tests where you have the test functions and then import the functions from the source directory or uh, have a source directory with separate files for the functions and the test of the functions. Mm. Yes, thanks. Okay, uh, let's add uh, a test which uh, checks for uh, being equal to 0 0.3. I'll and see how that goes. Mm -hmm. 
I'll correct the add function and then we assert for okay oh just add the assert here so we have a third assert uh, which checks uh, for the addition of 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 And my test example.py. And then we see that uh, we get a floating point error. So we're not, uh, or the floating point arithmetic plays as a puzzle. Um, we, when we add 0 0.1 and 0 0.2, we get. 0 0.3000 a lot of 4 which is, and the assert is that that is not uh, correct can, can you can you explain a bit like why uh, it doesn't raise an error like why that where, where did the 0004 appear why it does as uh, given error uh, I mean, like uh, in the function, you're trying to add 0 0.1 and 0 0.2, and the results should be 0 0.2, right? But no, uh, not in... 0 0.2, but 0 0.3. Yes, sorry. Like, like uh, the assert says, but uh, yes. Mm -hmm. So, where did the 0 0 0 0 0 4 uh, appear out of nowhere? Where did it well, appear? It comes from the presentation of uh, the uh, of the numbers. So mm -hmm. this is how uh, floating point numbers are represented uh, digitally in the computer. Um, we don't have a continuum uh, of decimals or numbers. We, we just have uh, discrete mm -hmm. uh, numbers. And uh, adding 0 0.1, 0 0.2, then give us give us 0 0.3004, which is not equal to 0 0.3. So we have to test for tolerance, numerical tolerance, uh, for this uh, assert to go be true then. So yes. how? How do you do that? So let's see. We need to modify the test. And uh, from PyTest import a prox. Uh, and We assert that the add function approximates 0 0.3. I think this will do the trick. Type pi test minus v example.py. Yes, and now the test passes. Yeah. So there's a link there to what every programmer should know about about floating point arithmetic. So that it gives further details of why this fails happens. Okay, so um, this is how we can test uh, locally. Uh, each test framework has its way of collecting and running all test functions. Like here, it's uh, my test selects tests, starting with test underscore. Python, Jula, C++ has better tools for automated tests than Fortran. So then you can use some of those tools for Fortran as well, if you use ISO C binding. 
OK. Any more? Any more questions or any more thing to add? Uh, no, everything is also answered uh, in the notes. Okay. So we are good to go. Then we'll start with today's uh, main lesson, automated testing, how we can do use continuous integration. So this uh, will show how we can implement automatic testing and each time we push changes to our repository. Uh, and we will also use the auto cross mechanism when we commit messages. So what does continuous integration mean in general? You see like CI, CD, what does it mean? Yeah, it means that you have uh, actions or processes that runs when you do a uh, check-in, that for every change you do to the code base, that you verify that there is basic functionality or um, that that the basic functionality is not broken, mm -hmm. that the that the code uh, can be used for whatever purpose it has, and uh, and uh, this is a way to protect the main branch, for instance so that you always know that the main branch is a working version of, of your software. Yes. Okay, yeah. It's a it's a it's something that uh in production they they follow. Uh, so uh, yeah, thanks for explaining. Yes, so with, it's very uh, important in agile uh, development because you then you can have uh, continuous delivery uh, or very short cycles for for uh, publishing your uh, or uh, shipping your software so uh, like uh, google for instance they are more or less updating the software the gmail software continuously so you never know uh, you d you don't you don't relate to any new versions of, of the software, really. You just use the code and you use the application and uh, and it changes as, as uh, from, can change from time to time, but you're not, you're not involved in selecting the specific versions. Yeah. Okay, so well, I'll uh, create a code uh, repository on GitHub. Uh, and then uh, I'll uh, add some code to that uh, repository. I will then uh, set up a test with GitHub Actions and see how then it plays out. Um, we'll introduce a bug in the repository and, and then uh, create an issue mm -hmm. and uh, you will help me fixing the bug and uh, we will see on um, how when you make pull requests how the test is then executed and to verify that your change is, uh, is uh, correct yeah and when yeah. We as a last step, we will also introduce more tests to, to increase the coverage of of uh, the soft or the of the function. Yeah, so I would say this is a very interesting section, and uh, this is the basics of what's happened in collaboration when you are collaborating with others and you want to make sure that the the latest version of your code is working and still you are working on fixing a bug or adding a new feature or adding some new experiments to the code. And uh, yeah, this is uh, the basics of what's happening actually both in industry and academia when you're collaborating with others.
Yes. So yeah. Let's go. So here, I'll, uh, here's my repository. Now here's my namespace. So I'll create a new repository called example CI. It's available. And this is an example of continuous integration. It's public. Add a readme file and add a Python git ignore uh, and MIT license. Then I create my repository. I'll uh, clone. Uh, I'll, I'll clone the uh, repository to my local computer. Mm -hmm. Git clone and the Git string. So I'm cloning the example CI. I step into the subdirectory example of CI. So what more should I do then? I'll add some code. Let's see here. So I'll add a file functions.py, which then contains four functions. Add, subtract, multiply, and convert Fahrenheit to Celsius. Copy. Vim function dot pi. Mm -hmm. There I added the PCD function and I save the file. I do git status. So my I'm on branch main. I'll commit this to to do a main branch and then push it. Git add function dot pi. Git commit message add functions git status so I've committed my changes and uh, I have I commit add functions. Mm -hmm. Git push origin main. So that uh, push the changes to my repository. So this should be now updated with function or I added the function, but I haven't added the test function, so I need to go back and add uh, that from that file as well. Vim test function of pi. Mm -hmm. So here's the test function. I'll copy it. Right, right, quit, git status, git add the test function, it's staged, git mm -hmm. commit then add test, oops. Graph. I add a test. 
hit push origin main somehow somehow both test function and and function is present yes so I'll uh, test the that the test function works locally. So I can just write pytest and then pytest will look for the file called test underscore. And uh, then there's an error because there's no module named functions. I'll win uh, test function. So it's called func from functions, import, add, subtract, and multiply. And uh, I called it function, so then I need to rename the function. That's minced. Uh, git move function functions dot pi hit status if I now run pi test it works it's green so I need to commit this change git commit rename function functions file Git graph. So this become became a more more commits than a, of original planned, but we'll see. So git push origin main. Mm -hmm. So now we should be set with the tests and uh, the functions on github so next we'll enable automated testing yes uh, also here functions are no function are pi the only rename to functions So we will now select the actions uh, menu, which is on the uh, upper line here. And here under GitHub actions, there is a, a large set of actions, but we will select the Python application where you create and test for a Python application. Mm -hmm. Configure. Uh, and, uh, and we see here now that in the example dash CI repository, there's created a subdirectory called GitHub uh, with a, another subdirectory called workflows. And here we have a YAML file that we will uh, uh, edit so we can enable actions. And this uh, .github uh, repository uh, subdirectory was created when I pressed configure. So if you look at the repository as it was clone, we see that there is no .github there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll uh, copy the um, the YAML file from the instructions. Copy, and I'll paste them at the end here. 
then I'll remove the original code. And so let's see here what it says. It's given the name test. It's um, uh, it uh, runs on push and pull requests. Uh, and here's the jobs the description. It uh, it runs on the Ubuntu latest, so the, the Linux Ubuntu version. Mm -hmm. uh, and the steps taken are our checkout. It's a setup of a Python environment. Uh, it runs uh, installation of Python packages. Then it does lint with Flake 8. Mm -hmm. uh, Flake 8 is a Python package, a Python application that checks for Python software errors or and Python formatting. So it gives errors if there's syntax errors or the formatting of the Python code is not according to the standard. So, and this is called the linting after the uh, tool lint, which was used, which was developed for C code. Uh, after the linting, we'll run PyTest, uh, and PyTest will also produce a coverage report. Yes. Yes. So um, uh, So before, like you did the commit change, I just want to add something that uh, this workflow when we are using in line nineteen that we are using Ubuntu latest, it means, um, um like we are creating some some hooks. On every changes, and as as you can see on late on line eight and line ten, on every changes for 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 push and pull requests on main, uh, there would something happening on GitHub side, and the things that happening is it actually create a container with the latest Ubuntu, so the OS is running, and it do the testing that we mentioned that. So all, all the things are happening on the GitHub side, not on your computer. Yeah, please go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. That's right. So uh, commit the changes, create Python app, my-hub.yaml. Uh, I'll keep that. So I'll commit directly to the main branch. Mm -hmm. um, and now let's see what's happened. If we then go to actions, we see there's a workflow running. And it's a kind of yellow or red there, it turns to green. So if I, if I go into this, uh, yeah, there I see that this is triggered while it, the push uh, with the commit that uh, I just wrote, create the Python app.yaml. And here we can go in and see the steps that start, are taken. Uh, there's a setup of the job. Um, and there's the checkout of the source code. Uh, there's the setup of the Python uh, environment, mm -hmm. installing dependencies, that's uh, pip and flake 8, among other things. So there's a long list of dependencies that are installed. Um, in this case, I didn't have a requirements.txt file, but if that was present, it could then install the, the requirements.txt. So with this, uh, the linting, check here, is, we see that uh, my code is not up to the stand Python standard. So uh, I have too many blank lines and uh, there are functions that are, are imported but unused as part of the test function. Uh, so we get this uh, error numbers from flake eight. 
So I has have I have a work I have a job to do improve to improve this code then. Uh -huh. Um yes, and then we have the uh, test itself. It runs uh, test function dot pi and there is no error message. The the test uh, uh works fine. And after the pi test, then there is the uh, tidying up of the job, um, cleaning up Python, uh, post run actions, and the job is completed, and the container goes out of scope or are terminated. So, so this is executed on the the check in or or and and then uh, the res res results are present. Uh, until there is a new uh, pull request or check-in. Um, yeah. so, so it doesn't run continuously, it just runs when there is an action or those actions that, under those actions that we have specified. Great. Okay, I'll, uh, I think we will take a break now. Yes. Uh, uh... And 10 minutes break, and then we'll continue. Uh, with uh, with uh, introducing errors and see how those are handled. If we then commence at uh, ten uh, at ten over. Uh, zero point eight. Zero we'll point eight. Back. Yeah, yeah. We'll be back at zero point eight. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Thanks. See you. See you. Hi, and welcome back. Welcome back. Okay, so we have a running uh, action on GitHub. And the tests uh, are green. Mm -hmm. uh, so what happens when there is a bug or error in our code? Yes. Let's see. Uh, I'll now update my local repository since I have made a commit on GitHub. I committed the action file and uh, this is not on uh, my local repository. So I'll do git pull origin. I'll first do the git graph. Um, so my last commit was rename functions file. And then I do git pull origin file, my, uh, my main, uh, and I get the last commit from GitHub. And then git graph shows that the uh, I added the create Python app uh, YAML file. And if I inspect my subdirectory, I'll see that, that now I have the GitHub dot github sub subdirectory uh, locally as well. Okay, so what's the next step? Um, so uh, I'll uncomment the code in the test functions uh, and push it to github. Vim test function dot pi so I'll, we'll now add the test of the subtract function and we'll see how this goes git status we have to did the test function git add test function dot pi git status git commit <laughs> Commit message add test of subtract. Mm -hmm. And then I'll push, I'll search for the latest push command git push origin main. Mm -hmm. 
and there we go. So I push directly to the main branch on GitHub. And uh, let's see what happens on actions now. So the GitHub has updated with the latest commit and here's something pending. What's happening here? All checks have failed, it tells. Then we go into can go into details. I could also log on into actions and see the same thing, but it but it but the code view gives me the the same information. Details. And we see that the test with our test now fails. Mm -hmm. um, I, this uh, test, uh, I also get an uh, email to my mailbox that tells that, that the continuous integration job now fails. So GitHub uh, do uh, take actively steps to inform me that there is errors. Okay, so I'll uh, create a uh, issue. My first issue, subtract test, test of subtract fails. There is some error somewhere. Submit this here. So then, uh, so now uh, we have a broken software. What do we do next, Fosan? Can uh, you help me? <laughs> uh, yeah. So this is actually a very good demonstration of how collaboration works. So when usually there is a uh, there is a bug in open source software, other people collaborating on that software can come and help, and we want to demonstrate that. So uh, let me maybe I can I'll, share my screen and I'll stop the share. Yeah, sure. And try to try to demonstrate that. Yes. Give me a second and sharing. Uh, yes, let me just resize this one. I hope now you can see my Chrome browser without any issue. Oh, let me. Okay. This is good. Okay. So let me first uh, find the repository that you created. So this is the repository and I go and see, okay, there is an active issue. I will go and check and see, yeah, there's a there's a problem with the sub subtraction test and probably the subtraction uh, function that it fails the test. Uh, so usually when I want to contribute this, contribute to solve this uh, issue or add a, add, a, add a feature, I would go and, because this repository is not mine, so I would go and fork the repository, which means some kind of cloning the repository online and getting a new branch of it, and then try to work it on my own. Uh, so uh, I would go and create a fork out of it. Oh no, this is the branches. Uh, to get a fork, I would go here with the forks, or maybe here to get a new fork. And then I'm the owner, I would let it, let it the example CI the name and everything is fine. So I would create the fork. So everything would be copied into my namespace and my GitHub account. And you can see this is under my name now. And uh, it also mentions that it has been forked from the from the original repository. It also shows you some banners that uh, is it updated with the original repository or not. So if I 
try to change it and add some commits, this would be changed. And also if the original repository changes, this would be changes as well. Uh, sometimes I can sync it with the original fork without any issues, but it depends on what kind of files I have changed and what kind of commits that I had. Sometimes there are some, conf some conflicts that you have to solve. Uh, but yeah, let's maybe continue from here. So I would go ahead and fork this repository on my local computer. Let's go to my local computer and uh, let me, uh, is the font okay? Yeah, the font is okay. Okay, so I would clone this repository and I would go to the, uh, this is my VS code and you can see that the repository has been cloned here. So I know there is a problem probably in the functions. So I would try to go and see either the problem is with the, um, with the function, with the test, which the test is okay. So probably the, the problem is not coming from the test. I would go to the functions file and try to, to see if I can handle the bug or not. And I see that this is the bug coming from, so I would uh, try to fix the bug, right? I want to fix the bug. But usually the best practice to do this is to create a branch and then try to do the, all the commits there. So I would go back to my terminal and uh, I would uh, do a branch, for example, um, let's call it, uh, usually it starts with a name or username or something, and then uh, fix subtraction bug. Um, You're not okay. in the Git repository. Oh, yes. yes. Sorry. I have to go to the Git repository first and then try to do it again. So I would create a, create a new branch called my username and then uh, name of the branch. So you can see that I'm currently in the new branch. If you are using VS Code, you can also see it here that I'm on the new branch. So in the new branch, I would go ahead and fix this issue and save the file. So if I now get a get a status, you can see in the new branch, this function has been changed. So I would go ahead and come and, and add this file. So the functions and then create a commit. Usually when you're fixing a bug, it's good. It's a good practice to mention the issue number that you fixed. So when you are trying to merge it and the owner wants to look at the pull request, it has a better understanding of how it resolved, but you can also mention it in the description. But let me uh, add, um, mention the issue number here as well. So fix this subtraction bug on address on Issue number one. Um, mm. Oh, I forgot the, the message command, the message flag. Okay. So now everything is good and I can go with uh, push it from origin to origin from the branch, which was fix subtraction bug. Okay, great. So if I go to the, if I go to the GitHub, you can see if I refresh the page, you can see that there is a new branch has been created, which I pushed from my local machine. And uh, if I go to that branch, you can see that this branch is one commit ahead, as I described before, from the original fork. And here you can see that we can create a pull request. And the pull request is to merge everything that we changed back to the original fork that we got from the original repository, uh, which is a great thing. So we would go with compare and pull request. Uh, from GitHub side, there would be an automated uh, not testing, but automatic checkup. So if this repo, if this commit, and if this branch 
is easy to merge. And you can see that it's very easy to merge because I only sub replace the file, but sometimes it's very hard and you have to do a lot of different changes and solve the conflicts before the merge can happen. But uh, GitHub would also help you with that and raise an issue that it raise an error that if it is not easy to merge. I think you need to have fixes uh, in the uh, uh, in the description there, but I'm not sure it is enough to have it in the title. Um, yeah, I would add a description as well that uh, in this in this pull request I solve the subtraction error addressed addressed in. Issue number one. But I, th uh, I think you need to add use to your word fixes. There are other words as well, but I don't think the uh, the, the fixes. What do you mean? Uh, that that uh, that uh, it it uh, it needs the verb fixes. For instance, there are ah, other okay. words as, as well. Okay, here uh, you mean. No, I mean, mean in front of the pull request. No, in front of the hash uh, number one there, addressed in, in, okay. in, in the description, uh, in the body. In the title. The, not, not in the title, but in the body. That okay. Add fixes so, in front of the, the hash number one there. Okay, so... There is. You mean here? Yes. So you mean fixes, right? Like this. Yeah, like this. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Uh, so this pull request, I would say, this pull request uh, fixes. Let me rephrase it. Fixes number one. Uh, on the subtraction error. Yeah, something like it. Yes. And the error, the error was caused from a bug in the function. Dot, dot actions dot pi. Fuck. Let me also add it like this. So it, okay. So I had it add a description. It's uh, when you are usually usually contributing to an open source uh, repository. There are some guidelines on how to how to contribute you have to go read that because usually there are like some things that you have to check and you have to mention the number of the, the issues or the files that you had changed and you have to follow the guidelines but we don't have a guideline here and just want to demonstrate so i would uh create the pull request and what it does if uh if we go back to the original repository that uh has been created from Biran. You can see there is a tab on pull requests and my pull request has been created here with the title and also with the description. Uh, so this has not been merged. So the original repository has not changed yet. You can see the pull request is still open. You can create pull requests in on, on a draft mode to show to showcase that I'm working on an issue, which is also a good practice. And uh, I'm still waiting for the original repository owner or for the for other editors that the original repository should have to review the case. And if they have got an approval, they can uh, merge it. Also, they can like add some comments and everything. But I think Buran can showcase that. So maybe it's good to. Give the screen back to you and you can continue from here. Yes. Okay, so let me stop sharing and we can continue. So there now <clears throat> let's look at the state of the uh, my repository. So now I have a pull request uh listed on the pull request um fix the subtraction bug addressed in number one so let's have a look at what this is and here now you see uh Hosanna written a pull request they were stating that if 
fixes the error. And uh, GitHub now have now uh, queued up a workflow waiting for waiting for being run. And this is our test of the of the software. So I'll I'll prove this. And then the tests are running. So it's yellow while it builds up the container and the environment. And we can go to details and see. So something, yes. So it doesn't, um, and there's a change here in GitHub. Uh, as a part of the pull request, it, the coverage report is not created. So this gives an error. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was a little bit surprising. But uh, go, but we'll go back. So the check uh, did fail due to creating of the coverage report. Yeah. Oh, what was that? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure whether there's there, there's a um, permission mm -hmm. missing that uh, or, or why it's uh, fails as as a part of the coverage uh, part of the. What does it say here? Okay. Where for HTTP error we resource not accessible. Okay. Okay, then we'll learn something new today as well. Um so it was supposed to run and be green. Um but that will it will turn green when I'll Merge, confirm the merge. Um, yeah, maybe uh, something that it's also good to showcase is like if you go to the files changed and you tap, you can see all of the changes that has been made, and you can also make comments before approving and like add uh, maybe some comments to change some of the functions or some of the changes that they has been made. So you can comment that there is like a more like a collaborative way yeah. uh, before making the approval. That's right. I'll, I didn't do that. No, it's completely fine. Uh, how's the actions now? So the merge uh, goes green. Mm -hmm. So the uh, yeah. build now works. Mm -hmm. I think the coverage error was coming from the fact that uh, it was trying to create it on my repo probably or something like that. And that was the, it was yeah, a purge. Which is strange, really. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any questions to what we have done so far? Um, the, no, the notes are all good. So yeah, I think everything is good to go. Uh, so we accepted the, uh, accepted the pull request. So now we'll uh, increase the coverage. Mm -hmm. So I'll um, write a test for the multiple function and uh, create a pull request. So we'll see how how this. Let's see if I can find a coverage report. Uh, action. No pull requests. So, so here. No, there's no coverage report either here. 
Uh, no, but if you go to the workflow and see the actions here on the build, you can see the coverage letter, co co coverage. Yes, so if you open the result, yeah. And if you go to the details of the build, mm -hmm. and it create coverage if you open it. Yeah, but I, ah, okay. don't, it does... I don't get the uh, coverage uh, XML. Ah, okay. What's the mm. usage? Because I, okay, let me see. Uh, uh, for the failed build one, I can see the coverage, but it doesn't create it, uh, the file. Oh, okay. So for example, if you open the failed one, we can see that uh, it, it mentions the coverage of the, yeah. Yeah, but it just, just gives no, us the error. Error mm -hmm. message. If yeah. on line fourteen, if you open the results, okay. Yes. Results. So you, yeah. So yeah. You can see. There, there it's uh gives a report of coverage of eighty eight percent. We'll we will see with the next pull request that I get get the coverage, uh, as a part of the pull request when the when the test has been executed. Okay. Uh, so let's go back to the code. I'll implement the. I'll do git pull. So we get the latest changes, git graph. Uh, and then I'll add a test of the multiply function to the test function. Def test multiply assert multiply five and five equal twenty five. Save git status, git add test function, git commit minus m, add test of multiply. Git grow. Hmm. Oh, I, was, I should have. I should have made this in a branch, really. Oh, it's fine. Um, yeah, but now it will, will commit directly to. Yeah. Git push. See if we get the. Can we get the. Um, Yes, I'm new sorry. test, <laughs> new. Mm -hmm. So it mm. failed. So I get a chance to correct this. Okay. We are also a bit behind the schedule, so we have to wrap this up. But maybe yeah. we can see uh, why it failed and. So why did it fail? Uh, it was coming from the lint, it was like eight. Multiply, okay. Yeah, there is an L missing. <laughs> <laughs> Git checkout minus B. Uh, And I created a branch mm -hmm. in test function.py. 
Multiply. Yes. That was the error. Yeah. Right quit. Git that. Text function. Git status. Git commit. Minus n. X test function git push. It says git push setup stream origin Lindy fix. So I'll copy that and like this. And now we'll have a I, now we can compare and write a pull request. So that was my intention. Create pull requests. So we see this branch has no conflicts, but the, it running the mm -hmm. action. And we will see that we get the coverage report as a part of the pull request. Yeah, here it is. Yes. And uh, if you remember from the details that we looked at, we had a coverage report of 88% before. And now uh, we have a overall coverage of 94%. So we improved the coverage of the uh, of the code. So I'll merge this, confirm merge. Yes, so this was, um, this was uh, automated testing. Uh, it can really protect your code from being broken. And as a code, but of course, as a code grows and you add more and more tests, these actions will take more and more time. We we said here's a simple test and it takes a while to complete. Mm -hmm. So if you get a large portfolio of tests, uh, a pull request or a, a check in will then take several minutes to complete. Yeah. So so you have to strike the balance between uh, um, how many tests you add to these actions. Yes, uh, I hope you find it interesting and you can then redo the example uh, from the, as an exercise after the lesson. Any more thing more to add? Uh, um, no, everything was good. Uh, maybe we can start the next section to be a bit, that we are a bit on behind the schedule. Yeah. Uh, we showed Python, but this can be done for other languages as well. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Then we'll um, go to test design. Uh, there's a lot of examples here. Um, um, so we'll uh, dive into different tests and see see how uh, these are. So let's get started with the first one. We have we have the function factorial. Uh, how would you test this one? Hosan. Um, so it was also a bit. I, I think that the question was also asked in the in the beginning of the session that uh, if we have a function that it depends on the input what you want to do, and uh, what I do usually is to tr create some test cases and usually take care of the edges or the barriers. For example, if the number is too large or something like that. Yes. Uh, yeah. But for this, I would like add some small number, some medium number, probably, and a large number to see if the function is working. Mm. 
here here the numbers grow rapid rapidly with the mm -hmm. with small input so you can easily get an overflow or yes so let's see we'll take a look at the solution here so here it's tested for one no, for zero one and two there are no large uh, values uh, simple values really uh, and this is, as I said, this is a pure function, so it uh, has, uh, it's quite easy to test. Mm -hmm. uh, in Python, uh, Python has the um, pipe long, so so if you get really, you can give, get really large, test really large numbers with Python. Uh, the uh, challenge is really to calculate the large uh, factorial and uh, have it ready for inserting into a, a test. Uh, design a test for a function that receives two strings and returns a number. This uh, seems simple as well. Uh, you could really add uh, the the uh, documentation here as an uh, as a test. Mm -hmm. So if you step out of step into a new subdirectory so we could uh, create a function dot pi in insert the code In test function pi, would that be from function import and the name of the function was count verb occurrence of the there is, string? Yeah, there are two double. Yeah, there are double R's in the occurrence. Yeah. So define test count word mm -hmm. as search. And if we then say count word occurrence mm -hmm. in string. One, two, one, two, three, four, and the argument, second argument would be one. Then I assert that this is equal number two. Take a join there. Right quick, how will my tests work now? So, yes, then we'd have tested the doc string really. Uh, and there are solutions, there are other strings, and we could uh, add this test to see how it behaves with several, this is like kind of border case in test function. Mm -hmm. My test, and here we get an error. So it either we have to change the test or we have to change the function. 
So um, we are not sure here what, what the what's wrong here, whether we our specification of the function is wrong or whether the test is wrong. Yeah. But the um, function returns zero and uh, we have expected to it to return one. Okay. Uh, here is a design of something similar. We count the words occurrences in a file. Mm -hmm. uh, but here we get is a getting a more complex function, which are doing several things. So one approach here could be that we didn't implement the opening of the file as a part of the counting function, but they rather used had the file opening uh, in a function for itself, which then could return a data object, like a list, for instance. And then we use the count word occurrence in string from the previous example instead as it is very similar to the previous example that that we did maybe um it's it's better to buy to bypass it and then talk about uh, how how do we want to check if there is a dependency for the next one yeah and yeah. Uh, and we also have the question about that yeah, earlier today Exactly. So here we have an external dependency from reactor input to import max underscore temperature. Mm -hmm. um, and how would you approach this word function? So usually when it's uh, it's dependent on an external factor, it can come be coming from a physical world or another library. Uh, if that that specific number is not available or it changes, uh, it's usually good to uh, mock it, which means you give it an arbitrary number and then try it with that arbitrary number instead of getting the actual number from the external source. Yes. So uh, let's see what's uh, written under the solution here. Uh, here it says describes monkey patching uh, that you then set the temperature from uh, the external to some to a specific value. Mm -hmm. uh, mocking is also doing the same thing. Yes. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll uh, skip the next, I'll skip the design five and we'll go to test driven development. I'll think I'll spend five minutes on that and then, and we'll also touch upon testing randomness. Okay. Um, so, in test driven development, you do develop the uh, the test first. So here uh, we have uh, a function that takes an integer and it returns fis on three and five on bus and, and multiple. So five returns bus. And uh, for arguments that are multiples of both three and five returns fis and bus together. Uh, fails in case of non-integral arguments or arguments are negative or, or arguments zero or negative or otherwise it returns the integer itself. So that's the specification of the of the function. So I I would then go on and uh create the create the test first test function dot file 
so I'll write some functions import this doesn't exist yet so but I'll write my function files as functions of right import Fispus and then the final test of Fispus uh, assert Fispus three equals this assert this plus five equal bus. So then I've writ written a, a simple test. So if I run this, of course, now I'll get an error. So uh, import the import statement false. So 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 this is getting read. Uh, get, getting their state red is called under test read development, but I want to get to the state of green, and I will do that as fast as possible. So how do I do that? So I'll implement Pispus uh, uh, in the function of pi. Um, this, uh, this bus and uh, as a simple step i'll i'll just uh, say if and there's a number here should be number if if number number equals 3 return this else if number equal five oops mm -hmm. return bus else return number mm -hmm. okay so if i run pytest now it was wrong in the function yeah with that with the else yeah there was a mm -hmm. column missing pytest so now the tank now is getting to the state green but we know that the that the function that I've written is too simple for the specification, but but it's a first iteration of the function really. So uh, as soon as I add more tests to the test function now, to, uh, this function I have written will fail. That's okay. Then I'll go and another iteration and implement a new. Uh, a more complex for FISPERS function. But I have started and I haven't got my feel of how the function is used, how it's called, what the arguments are. Um, uh, so so it's the an easy first step, really. Uh, yes, so the solution then points to a um, complex uh, solution. Uh, which raises uh, exceptions and uh, and handles all all uh, border cases. Mm -hmm. So then, after several iterations, I will gradually reach something similar. Um, Okay, I think that's what we will uh, have time for during test design. Yeah, we'll touch upon randomness. How would you test randomness? So with the randomness, because the, uh, the random generators are working with the seed, uh, it's usually good to sit, set the seed and based on that seed, you would get, it's not random anymore, your program, because the seed is fixed. So the randomness would be 
some um, statistic again, like um, um, static, so you don't have any randomness anymore. So for testing a function that has some randomness, set the set the state, and then you have a static number, and it would be very similar to what we already covered. Yes. So here, there's two functions: roll dice and yetsi. Uh and uh, and we will see that uh, uh, when you test these functions, you set the random seed one, and then you get to uh, a, a series of numbers that are uh, equal each time. Okay, I'll think um, we'll go to uh, to the checkout and really or to the, some conclusions and uh, recommendations. Um, yes, learn uh, one test framework well enough for the basics. For Python, it's a uh, Python Pytest is really simple. You have a unit test as well, but it's more complex. And that's my experience. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's explore and use the good tools that it exists. Um, start with some basics, uh, some simple things to test. I think it's a good thing to automatize tests. So add them to your Git repository. Um, strike a healthy balance between unit tests and integration tests. Um, as you grow your code, then tests should also sh should increase. And as the example with test develop the de test develop the test development cycle shows that you can. You can add tests as you add the new functionality. Mm -hmm. Also, when you fix a bug, uh, it's a good thing to add a test against the bug. So you get a volume of regression tests that can be used to ver verify your code. And uh, use code coverage to analyze uh, what part of the code that are not executed. Yes. Yeah, and if you make your code easier to test, it becomes also more modular. And we'll see in the, the next lesson how to create code more modular. Um, ways to start. Uh, Perfect is the enemy of good. So just start for something that's good, good enough. Um, there's always probably something you can isolate and test as a part of a function or mm -hmm. split the function in more in two or um, if you have data analysis or simulation of some sort, um, make end-to-end -end tests with sample data. Yep. And uh, use uh, local and testing frameworks and GitHub actions. Um, yeah. Um, I think one of the takeaways here is, as you said, the perfect is uh, the enemy of good. So doing the test-driven development and adding like a test for all of your functions and getting a 100% test coverage can be a bit overwhelming, but it's uh, but a, a code that has some tests is better than a code that doesn't have any. So start adding tests to your most important functions and uh, the, the things that really could go wrong. And then in the future, maybe you would get, get the habits of adding more tests and more tests. Yes. So that was automated testing. Now we'll go for lunch and we will resume in an hour. Yes. Okay. Uh, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, and uh, yeah, see you after lunch break. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye-bye.